What's up guys? Welcome back. Today we are reviving the pro replay analysis series where I take a look at pro gameplay and break down exactly what pros do that makes them so good. Today, we're going to be taking a look at none other than Garrett G, arguably one of the best players in the world to figure out what makes this guy so good at Rocket League. Also, if you're watching near when this drops, I only have 10 spots left in my private coaching program. So if you want to get coached by me, head down to the description below and DM me Garrett G on Discord to let me know you came from this video. Other than that, let's get into this. What's up guys and welcome back to the Pro Breakdown series. Today we're watching none other than Garrett G to break down not just what he's doing, but the actual reasons behind it, the actual logic and the why to hopefully help you get as much value as possible and integrate what Garrett G does into your gameplay. We'll start from the top here today. We have Garrett, first killer in Chicago, versus Canada, Alushin, JNaps, and Squishy. This is the Intel Open Team USA versus Team Canada. Let's take a look at what Garrett G does and what makes this guy arguably the best player in the world to stop. All right, so let's take a, let's take a look after the kickoff um, and Garrett G is gonna clear here. This is, I mean, the this is all where it starts. I mean, we're literally nine seconds in and you can already see why this guy's one of the best in the world. Take a look at this play. When Alishin sends this ball off the backboard, what a lot of you watching right now would probably do when this ball comes up is you would panic, right? You would slam the boost. You would put your foot on the put your foot on the gas, charge up this wall, and try to flip into it and hit it as fast as possible. But notice that Garrett G recognizes this ball is too high to clear from up here. If he clears this ball from the top of the wall, even with the ball, he is going to spike it into his own waterfall and send a pass right down from the other team. So take a look at how in this situation, he actually goes up the wall and he separates, he creates a little bit of distance from the wall and waits for that down bounce just as you would off the ground, right? Just as you would hit the ball on the up bounce off the ground, he waits for it to bounce off the wall, which is gonna allow him to get the exact touch he wants, send it over the entirety of Team Canada here into complete open field for a quick counterattack and almost a goal from Chicago. That's just, this is brilliant defensive play. It's a really smart pass, just the execution fails a little bit. And here we see a little bit of awkwardness from the blue team. This is once again, likely communication issues. You see Chicago and Garrett here. They're probably scared Alishin is gonna bang the ball here, but once he turns back and first killer is going for a bump, this is absolutely Garrett's ball. He should probably charge on this. Um, it's just a little awkward because of likely comps um, and almost gets the blue team scored on. Notice how both teams at the highest level, guys, how are pros, what is their go-to converting? Converting mechanism, Garrett G just showed it. Squishy and Alishin and uh, JNaps almost just executed it. It's right, that infield pass on offense. A lot of teams are gonna cover the net, but that infield pass is killer at the high levels even. Definitely something to be taken away. This is just beautiful attacking. So, so let's break this down. Um, a lot of people probably wouldn't realize all that's going on in this play, but I actually just wanna highlight something for, for everybody watching. It's gonna be a huge rotational uh, bonus for you, okay? Pay attention here. Look at how the blue team is attacking on offense. It's this triangle formation here that I want you to pay attention to. A lot of players, when the play is developing here, who are in maybe Chicago spot, um, would see this play developing, see this play moving up the wall. Um, no Garrett G is behind him, but naturally drift to the center. A lot of players, let's say a lower ranked player than Chicago, would see first killer put pressuring up here and be inclined to start to drift to the center to wait for the center pass. Notice how the blue team just, even without team chemistry, knows their role so well and approaches this attack so well that look, first killer is perfectly pressuring the ball as the first man. Second man, uh, Chicago here, is ready to apply pressure if the orange team wants to challenge sooner, if JNaps was to challenge sooner. And when JNaps fakes this and tries to take it all the way around, Garrett instantly, his head is on a swivel, he's cutting across to the left, and that's just textbook offense. You might be wondering, how does Garrett know that this is his ball to follow? Take a look at this. So when Garrett hits the ball up here, after he gets this 50, freeze here. This is the difference between a good player and a great player. A good player cuts rotation when they want to. A 
A great player cuts rotation when they have to. And look at the difference. Here's how you know the difference. Garrett is at 40 boost here. What does Garrett want to do? Garrett probably wants to go grab 100 boost and get ready to clip on him, right? Who wouldn't? Uh, but look at what he does do. He sees Chicago back. He sees this threat gap. He knows first killer is in his back right corner, right? Still recovering from this play. And so he says, I don't want to go for this ball, but I have to chase Alishin down. And he uses all of his boosts to interfere, force the ball out, and create an easy clear for the blue team. And then look, what happens? Garrett is now left with four boosts. And does Garrett want to be sitting back here waiting for a boost to spawn? No, it's not fun, but he made the sacrifice he needed to make to keep his team on offense and to create opportunities. And that's and that's what makes Garrett. And you see him like you see him do it again. You might be saying, why are you freaking out, Luke? What what, what is he doing? Well, well, it's it's just this very team first play style. You see Alishin go for the attack here, and Garrett G is pre-jumped because he knows first killer in Chicago are rotating on the right side of the field behind him, and he has to force the play. He's Every time there's open space here on defense, you see he is instantly, even if he has low boost, he is getting up and he is forcing the play, making the orange team show their hand, and this is allowing the blue team to survive on defense and create these really, really powerful counterattacks. I mean, even you see it here, you see Squishy going for an air dribble, Garrett G instantly pre-jumps. And it might seem silly, but that play is actually exactly what Garrett should be doing in that situation as the first man up. Um, when you are the first man, guys, if you're watching right now, what you can take away from Garrett's play style is when you're the first man, you need to go for the ball. Sometimes you're in a situation where you're uncertain and you may not want to go. But as the first man, by going, you allow your team multiple levels of interference, multiple layers of defense, and you give yourself multiple chances as a team to stop the offense. Um, and Garrett's very, very wise about that. When there's open space, he shuts down the open space and he does not let the ball get to his goal line. That's what's allowing the blue team, I think, to function so strongly on defense here. So very important note, don't just do what the pros are doing. You have to understand why they're doing it because you can't always copy what they do play by play. Very important note to keep in mind there. He's an enabling his team so well right now, so expertly, because sometimes you're going to be in games where you are not going to get plays handed to you. And sometimes you're going to be in two minute, three minute streaks of a 3v3 game where your best play every time is to just challenge early and force the ball. But notice how Garrett has no problem doing that. And he's just playing the role he should play. He's playing his job at every given time and he's not trying to force anything. And I think that's what makes Garrett such a strong player. He's always playing for the team. And it's something that no matter what rank you are, you can take away. Here, first killer gets a huge beat. Oh, first killer fakes the double, baits out squishy. Ball's coming off the backboard and <laughs> there we go. Chicago finishes it up. Not sure if this was intentional or not, but this double fake first killer absolutely just sets Garrett up. That's kind of the, the perk of, of creating that, that toolkit, getting your mechanics to the point where you're threatening the second touch. If players are scared of your second touch, it doesn't matter even if you can hit it. I've been noticing like this when I play in-houses with uh, lower ranked players in my coaching program. Just the fact that I can threaten my second touch creates a ton of opportunities um, because players have to respect you. And that's why that's where mechanics come in uh, with high level decision making. Very smart play here. Um, once again, I really, really like this cheat. Like this is the classic scenario where let's slow this down and actually break down what's going on. Like this moment right now, if you are not GC2+, plus, this is like a red flag moment. Like I don't trust Chicago to hit this ball. I see a lot of players miss wall hits in this situation. But you're Garrett, right? And you see Chicago on the ball. That's why positioning here makes sense for him. He knows Chicago is going to get a good 50. And so by playing up, he's capitalizing on the the win case he's playing best case worst case scenario very well here and he's in a perfect position to pounce when this play develops another thing where it's like do i recommend you doing that watching right now no like i do not recommend you do what garrett just did but it's going to work very very well at the high levels um and create opportunities and this is just brilliant like the, the game's moving so fast here but i just want to point something out it's like the difference between like like SSLs and pros. Take a look at this. I don't even know if you notice this. Watch Chicago in this play. You see this? Look at Chicago and watch this challenge. What do you think Chicago's gonna do here? Place your bets. What do you think Chicago's gonna do here? When we watch the play, what does he actually do? 
he just completely lets the ball go. He just absolutely just drives up, says, what's up to Squishy? And then turns back. For those of you who don't know, you might be watching saying, well, why did Chicago do that? Why would a high-level player do that? That's forcing, right? That's forcing an action, and that's understanding rotations in Rocket League and, and just playing them, schooling them to the highest level. Chicago knows by challenging here, Squishy is going to be obligated to throw the ball forward. So he just lets Squishy hit it, and that creates perfect possession for Garrett. That's like like a huge game sense, um, a huge game sense moment from Chicago. Like that's just brilliant play um, that you can absolutely implement your games, guys. A lot of players at the lower ranks, you throw in a fake challenge, just communicate to your team, faking faking and do it before you challenge right not after um, and that's going to create situations like that where teams will just hand you the ball that's really really smart play from chicago and it eventually leads to a goal unmatched like he's hitting this ball and, and now he's going for a, now he's going for a psycho so yeah per perfect ending pretty good ending <laughs> there he'll hit it down and that's game and there you have it guys that's why garrett is so good he plays every role expertly he knows not just how to play for himself and how to create opportunities but also how to create opportunities for his team and that selfish play style is i think is what i would argue makes him one of the best in the world so there you have it guys that is what makes garrett g so cracked definitely let me know after watching this what was the biggest light bulb moment for you and if there's anything you want to see me talk about if there's a pro you want to see me break down if there's a concept you want to see me tackle or if you have any suggestions for how i can make this style of video better let me know in the comments down below other than that thanks so much for watching and i'll see you all in episode two of the series peace guys